Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the A10C2 tank killer and we're looking at the HMCS helmet mounted queuing system which is a component of the HMD helmet mounted display. This is a very complicated system so we're going to split this video down into sections to slowly introduce more complexity to help understand. We'll look in this order at controls, symbology, steer point manipulation, mark point manipulation, TGP T-Pod integration, saddle data link integration and finally what i call declutter programs let's look at today's scenario we have us there we are in a four ship and i am lead here is a friendly AWACS. here is bullseye here are two friendly other flights here are six abrams tanks that have eplrs eplas and here are five platoons of hostile armor four static and one moving controls some are existing to the legacy warthog some are new for the hmd first our axes shown as hotas slew horizontal and vertical with a the hmd these will work our hdc next tms target management switch forward short to hook an element forward long to move a speed sensor point of interest to that element right short to create new mark point right long to move speed to last created mark point aft short to drop a hook left short to acknowledge a new message or task left long to broadcast a spee dms data management switch at least in relation to helmet mounted display forwards and aft to turn brightness up and down on the hmd left long to cycle the hmd on and off right short to cycle the declutter profiles as i call them right short to cycle through the declutter programs right long to slave the tgp the t-pod to the helmet mounted line of sight boat aft and forward when dealing with tgp is going to be its usual function of cycling ir white hot black hot china hat regards to hmd aft short recages our hdc to our hmd crosshair and the usual long functions of aft long to slave just t-pod to speed and forward long to slave all sensors to speed coolie slightly different with the hmd so up has the usual function of moving soy sensor of interest from one of the mfds up to the hud and if hud is already soy it will move soy to the hmd left long to make left mfd soy right long to make right mfd soy in cockpit first thing we need to turn it on or ensure it is turned on currently it's turned off we're going to right click to turn it on so in standard configuration if we turn our head away from the hud basic symbology first this is our HMD crosshair. This line coming from the crosshair with the dotted lines is pointing from the crosshair to our current speed center point of interest. The further away the speed is in angle to this crosshair, the more dots we've got on this dotted line. This is our airspeed. This barometric altitude. This radar altitude, currently out of limits. This magnetic heading of the aircraft. Magnetic heading of the helmet. This is our horizon line. And these guys here that look like a pitch ladder are technically helmet elevation lines. 5 degrees up, 10 degrees up, 5 degrees down, and so on. Let's have a look at other elements. We've got here, 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 here are our steer points. And that is the tag or the name, if you like, of the steer point underneath. Note that it shows them through the bow of the aircraft, like that one there, which is uh, really, really useful. These crosses are signifying the EPLRS, the e plus of the six times friendly Abrams. This green circle is symbolizing a friendly air flight, foreign to our own flight. And another guy there. These guys are being transmitted to us via a Link 16 data link. Uh, note they have a number below them. That is our distance from us to them in miles. Also, we can find a domestic... Ah, there we go. So that guy there is in our flight. We can tell because he's blue. Same kind of idea as if we looked in the TAD. You all know a guy within our flight is going to have a blue slash purple circle. And we can see that he is flight member number three. And he is one mile away from us. But now we can expand on that symbology by aiming our HMD crosshair on the element. And we can see at the bottom there we've got from us to that element is bearing 104 for one mile he is at 
an elevation above sea level of 4353. He is an A10. He is heading 186 and a speed of 225 knots. Let's go and try a foreign flight. Okay, let's get that guy there in the bow. All the same symbology there with his various parameters, and he's an F15. If I were to aim at a steer point, let's get that guy there. Bearing from me, 331 for 18 miles, and he's at an elevation ASL 305 feet. And to an EPLAS element, bearing, range, elevation ASL, and he's a tank. Next, let's add steer point manipulation. So I've set my tad up so I can see my various steer points. We can cycle through steer points either via the HOTAS or we've got steer point incrementer here. And you can see, as usual, they show on the TAD and assign a speed to the currently selected steer point. We can also see that information on the HMD. So, steer point 2, named MSN1, is now selected. We know it is because it's got the yellow box and it also has located on it the speed. And we know that because we've got the wedding cake slash castle slash speed symbol. Next, I'd like to hook a steer point. To do that, we have to ensure the HMD is soy. Currently, this MFD is soy, so we're going to need to coolie up short twice. Once, twice. We've now got the asterisk in the HMD. Crosshair to this waypoint here. TMS up short, and we've now hooked that guy. So, we've now got that guy as a hooked waypoint, that guy as speed. And you can see, we've now got twin pointers. Green to the speed, yellow to the hooked waypoint. Now we've got this guy hooked, we could make him uh, speed. So why don't we TMS forward long, and we've now got him as speed. We could also now unhook if we're done with that. TMS aft short, and of course the speed will go back to our currently selected yellow steer point. Let's repeat the same for foreign flight. So we've got that foreign flight in the bow there. I'm going to highlight him, TMS forward short to hook. We've got the hook, and TMS forward long speed we've now got speed on that uh, f15 and with that you could do interesting things like slave your tgp to that aircraft and find out vid which type of aircraft it is or we could go and launch laser guided rockets if you really wanted in this case we're going to let him go with tms after short unhook speed will reset to our current selected steer point let's also show that we can assign a speed somewhere without having to use the hook so just this piece of land here i want to create a speed there so tms forward long there i've created my speed and i can go and task on that speed or in this case i want to slew the speed back to our selected steer point which would be tms r long interestingly what that's left behind is our hdc which we'll go through in a second but so you know we can page our hdc back to our crosshair if we want with China hat aft short. Let's add the next layer, mark points. So we've got some bad guys around here. We're going to find them with our eyes. Hopefully you can see them. I want to create a mark point on that group of vehicles there so that I can task someone to prosecute them. I'm going to put my cross set on them. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate because I'm just sending a tasking order to someone for them to go and engage this group. So TMS right short. Mark point A created. Of course, I can then hook and unhook in the usual fashion. The next group is over here. I'm going to create this in a different way. I'm going to use my HOTAS slew to send my HDC over to that. Now, because I'm paused, these are both doing the same action. In reality, when you're flying, this guy here is not ground stabilized. This guy here is ground stabilized. So almost always, you're actually going to use the HDC for this action. I'm going to create a mark point there with TMS right short and mark B is created. Let's create another. Uh, yep, guy over here. Let's uh, slew our HDC over to this guy here and create another. And of course we can only see as it stands the latest created mark. So we're going to change that just for this example over to our CDU and mark. We can now see all three created mark points. By default, mark A is selected, we can see because it's yellow, and the speed is also moved to that mark point A because we've got wedding cake. Let's re-cage our HDC. Now, I could engage these mark points myself by assigning the speed to them and going to fire my guns or fire my missiles, or I could broadcast them over saddle to other chaps in my flight and ask them to go and engage. So that's the use of those points. If I wanted to target mark point 
B now, as everything with the A10C, there are loads of different ways of doing it, but probably the, just the easiest would be with everything set as it is, just increment steer point on the UFC. We've now got selected mark point B and our speed is assigned there and we can go and shoot our guns or whatever. Next, let's integrate the TGP. First, let's just use it in, if you like, an old fashioned way. So let's say I want my TGP to look at mark C. One of the ways I can do it is steer point up again and I've got mark C selected and my speed there. Now I'm gonna fire up the old TGP, so uh, air to ground, and we're gonna make it soy, coolly right long. A standard, it's gonna be essentially ball sighted, so you can see the diamond there. Next, we're gonna slew the TGP to speed, or mark point C, with this guy here as soy, with China hat aft long. And you can see there, we are now pointing the teapot at mark C as designated through the HMD. Note that the current limits of the teapot view is shown by that dotted box there. And with the TGP as soy, I can use DMS up and down, as you all know, to change the zoom level. And that shows what I can see in the TGP, which is pretty cool. But that is really annoying to have to look there and then go and look there at the teapot. So why don't we bring this image from the right MFD onto the HMD? First, we need to make the HMD soy. So, coolie up short once, twice. We've now got the asterisk here, it's soy. And DMS left short, ping. We've now got our footage of our teapot shown here, which you've got to admit is pretty friggin' awesome. Note at this point, we can change the intensity of the HMD image once it's soy with DMS up and down, so bright or dark. I'm gonna put it up to bright. I should also show at this point that I can remove all of the image completely from the HMD when it's soy with DMS left long, and again, to bring it back. Next, in the role play, I understand that there is a moving convoy somewhere on this road. So the first thing I'm gonna do naturally is just to look with my eyes, and I cannot see, for the life of me, a convoy. It's probably occluded by you know, some of this uh, infrastructure with the aircraft. So there are various ways that we can point the teapot onto that road to have a look. But what I'm going to do now is send soy to the TGP with Cooley right long. And now I'm going to use my OTA slew to move my dotted box. And by virtue of that, what the teapot is looking at. And because we're looking for a convoy, it's going to be easier in IR. So we're going to use boat forwards and backwards until we're happy we've got the contrast that we want probably white hot's going to be best and now it should be a little ah there you can see they stand out now and i can zoom in with dms as you can see got that guy there and i'm going to i think they're moving so i'm going to create a point track on that guy with tms forward short i've now got a point track on that guy and that's how from the view of my HMD, with all the situational awareness that my HMD gives, I can work my teapot to find a guy and employ my Mavericks or whatever I want to shoot at that guy. And if we were going to do that, we'd yep. probably want this guy's speed as well. It's going to help us guide us to that target. And uh, so we would then, of course, do TMS forward long, and we've got now speed on that moving target. Next, we're going to look at saddle integration as data link within flight members. We're now in a live multiplayer server. RC is in a, another A10C2 with in a foreign flight, so it's not in my flight or my group. So the first thing I'm going to do is ensure that we're in the same group so that we can send saddle data link information to each other. RC, I'm while I'm on TAD and it's soy, I'm going to click net. Can you tell me what your group ID is, please? Group ID is 11. And your own ID? I'm going to change it to 02. You'll go 02. I'll come in 01 and I'm coming to 11. So UFC 11 group. And let's check. I can now see, you can still see the blue guy there. That is RC in my flight and I can see him. There he is. That is flight member two at 12 miles away from me next thing you're going to do is you're going to find a target and then you're going to broadcast first of all that speed publicly and i'm going to pick that up next thing i'm going to do is make sure my helmet mount display is on it is i'm going to set it as soy which now is now we're waiting for a broadcast from rc broadcast speed is left on okay. right so speed broadcast and speed, just a quick check in for here situational awareness i can see it's on my right roughly i'm going to look Right, and there she is, the two tier or one tier, however you want to say that. There is a foreign speed, so I'm going to put my cross over it. 
and I'm gonna TMS up forward short to hook it and TMS long to create a speed. That's now the full wedding cake, that's a speed there and I can go and, and attack it. I'm gonna unhook that. Now if you could broad broadcast privately just to me a target please RC. Okay, a new task has come through, thank you for that. I'm going to TMS left short to acknowledge. Done. Now I'm gonna look. Uh, where is it? There it is. If you can see that red triangle there, that is my tasking. So again, hover over it. TMS forward short to hook. TMS forward long. We've got a speed created. Go in and drop the bombs on it. That is the helmet mounted display with saddle. And finally, let's have a look at the programs we have for customizing or decluttering our HMD display. So make the HMD soy. Press DMS right short to cycle through program two, program three, program one, and they have different levels of what is excluded from the display, and we can of course customize that. We're going to go to our stat page and HMCS. We've got here programs one, two, and three. Under those three programs, we have all of the elements that we have possible to see within the HMD, two pages worth in fact, and for each element we can choose it select it with arrows up and down that's just to crosshair currently it's set to occluded it could also be off or on occluded means that when you move the helmet mounted display into the HUD that element will disappear like that off means it's always off on means it's always on so even if we moved it into the HUD the crosshair is still there and the horizon line slightly different options normal ghost or off also note that some items, some elements, have a maximum range. So an FMSB can have a maximum range currently set as 50 miles. We can use the UFC and the range input there to change that. We can also change the intensity for day or night. And we can do that independently for each program. That brings us to the end of our HMCS tutorial. I hope that was useful and see you later.